If you're anything like me, once algo trading became a passion, my next objective was to be able to make a living from it. But for private retail traders, this isn't without its challenges. If you have a robust strategy that delivers good, consistent results, then making a good living is certainly a possibility. But the challenge that many algo traders face is that they don't have sufficient capital to start off with. And this then makes it difficult to make your algo trading financially viable. So you can either simply accept that you don't have sufficient funds and make less money than you'd initially anticipated, or what very often happens is that traders start to over leverage. Just to make enough money to make all that hard work and effort they've already invested worthwhile. But over leverage too much and unfortunately you massively increase the probability of bankrupting your trading account. So despite the fact that you're exceedingly talented and you've spent months or even years developing and testing a trading system, you now find yourself in a position where you need to take unreasonable risks just to make it pay. This is a real shame and ironically, really great algo systems can still destroy your account when you do over leverage. I'm going to show you an illustration of this later using data from one of my own trading strategies that I've been trading in a live account for over three years now. And this has performed very well under normal levels of leverage. But I'm going to illustrate what would have happened to that same strategy if I had over leveraged. So what can you do about this? Well, there's a far better way to approach this problem and to reach your full potential as an algo trader without needing to over leverage. This alternative approach is what I'll be explaining in today's episode. Over leveraging just to try to earn enough money from the available trading capital you have is a seriously dangerous practice and I'd advise against it at all costs. As I said, you can have an extremely robust system with the potential to be very profitable in percentage terms, but if you over leverage, you can still fairly easily destroy your trading account. And there is a much better alternative that's open to you in order to maximise the profit you can make from all that hard work that you've put into developing your trading system. And that's what I'll be coming to later in the video. But first, what does over leveraging really mean? How do we define or quantify it? How do you know if you are over leveraging and exposing yourself to too much risk currently? And importantly, what are the chances that you will bankrupt your account using your existing position sizing strategy? Well, let's take a step back and consider a few things. If you had a system that managed to achieve 100% winning trades, and all those trades were perfect so they never went underwater while they were open, then you could use the maximum position size possible, and then you'd maximise the potential of your capital. However, the reality is that trading doesn't work that way, nowhere near. Every trader has losing trades, and even for winning trades they often go underwater considerably before they reverse and become profitable. So any trade that causes your equity level to decrease poses a potential risk. And the real danger occurs when you have a long series of unprofitable trades, one after the other. And the laws of probability tell you that on occasions this will happen, and to an extreme level. And if you are over leveraging, when it does happen, that risk turns into catastrophic risk. It will destroy your account. And this is, of course, where the concept of drawdown of equity starts to play an informative role. So let's now turn our attention to our illustration of exactly how this can occur. So the spreadsheet that you see here contains all of the trades executed by one of my own systems from a live account. It covers its entire trading history, which is about three years and two months. If you want to look it up on DarwinX, it's the Darwin symbol TRO. On the left hand side here, I have the actual trade data with the actual position sizing that I used. 
And then the data on the right hand side uses identical trade entries and exits, but has the ability for us to vary the position size so that we can look at exactly what would have happened to both the equity and the drawdown with different levels of aggressiveness in the position sizing methodology. So to see this in action, click on the link top right to go to the next part of the episode now.